Hey everybody, Tony D and little Joan here with a hot take on, well, laws and looking downstream, right? So when you pass a law or a policy, you should look downstream at how it could bite you in the butt. Now, according to, this is Vice News, so I, I take this with a huge grain of, of salt. But supposedly Trump is trying to bring back firing squad. I, I mean, it makes no sense. If you thought you were losing an election, I don't think Trump thinks he's losing this at all. Um, but even so, why would you bring back firing squads? I mean, that's crazy. Um, I think it might be true in that Trump is trying to scare some people who uh, were involved in this election malfeasance, maybe, uh, at a higher level. I think he's trying to go for those people. So maybe he's trying to scare them like, oh, I'm going to have you shot. <laughs> but um, it's not a good thing to bring back. I would, if this is true... I totally disagree with it. First off, I disagree with the state being able to execute anybody. They're terrible. Uh, they often railroad the wrong guy. And there's just no reason for it. If we had a fair and just uh, um, judicial system, we would have legal drugs, legal prostitution, legal victimless crimes. We'd have a very narrow uh, area of where we put people in jail, mainly for violent crimes, murder, um, you, know, you know the crimes. And you'd put them in jail and there'd be more than enough room for them. More than enough. So... I don't know if I believe this. It could be some sort of posturing. It could be one of Trump's big ass to, okay, we want a firing squad, but we'll have these other six things, right? Who knows? But it's Vice News, so. I mean, I look, I've looked at Vice News before and taken them at their word, but this, this seems pretty hyperbolic. On the other end of the scale is WND, which... It's more of a right-wing publication. So they're hyperbolic too, but they're quoting the college fix, which is probably more hyperbolic the other way. Chief diversity officer. So you know this is going to be great. First Amendment excuse is out regarding offensive speech. In a recent interview with the student newspaper, the chief diversity officer at the Georgia Southern University said that the First Amendment, uh, First Amendment excuse is out when it comes to dealing with insensitive or racist speech. Uh, the George Ann's Andy Cole, the George Ann's Andy Cole, I guess that's the name of the newspaper, prompted Tajuan Ta Wilson by discussing a blackface incident from June. The university did not rescind admission of the student, had donned the black makeup, scrawled the N-word on his forehead, and posted a pic on social media. Damn. That's pretty brutal. Um, you know a lot of students take issue with the words Georgia Southern uses the First Amendment excuse, Cole told Wilson. A lot of students feel that all Georgia Southern says is, well, we respect the right of the First Amendment. Cole argued that despite the futility of going to court over an obvious free speech matter, the university could show its commitment to anti-racism raci by doing just that. Hey, we hate this so much, we're willing to go to court for it. Um, Wilson at left responded, I agree with you 100%, and I agree with you 100%. The First, Amendment, the First Amendment excuse is out, right? First Amendment excuse is out, right? Folks are sick of that. No. <laughs> See, this is another guy who doesn't think down the road. Oh, well, we'll just do this and it'll it'll be great because our side will win. Yeah, until it flips the other way. Until we have more conservative people in power. Um, he's young. He's younger than me. 
he doesn't remember. I mean, I was just at the tail end of that conservative world. And they would abuse their power all the time. They're going to abuse it the other way. You know? And, and, and the other way, but in the same way. And the same way as, oh, we're going to win. No, no, no. We're going to win. Our side's going to win. Uh, so, you know, these diversity and inclusion officers, they're ridiculous. It, it, they're no different than having a religious officer if uh, if the Christian coalition had been permitted to do that back in the 70s and 80s or something. Um, that's all these guys are. They're pushing their wacky religion of wokeness. And it's too much. Look. I don't think the kids should have done that. That's pretty extreme. And certainly the college has the ability to say, hey, you know, that, that uh, you, you could have a rule that says something like that, that violates our behavioral guidelines or that hurts our school or whatever, you know, or, or it's just racist and <laughs> we're going to punish you for it. And the kid could say, oh, you can't punish me. Uh, First Amendment. I mean. Yeah, you let him take you to court. That's the way it's supposed to be. And then see if anybody in the courtroom is going to stand up for him. I mean, they might reluctantly stand up for him. But, um, you know, that's that's pretty extreme. Um, but, you know, uh, if, if you can't have First Amendment speech, if you can't protect speech that you find abhorrent, then you don't have it. Um, but I'm sure... The kids in the school ostracized him quite a bit if they found out about it. I'm sure he got blasted on Twitter. Um, but, you know, the kid's just being stupid. He's just being dumb. He's really going to regret that down the road. And, um, you know, and I'm not saying you should encourage this, but the First Amendment's the First Amendment. You know, I wouldn't have been afraid of that kid. I would have said, F you. F you, kid. You're a jerk. Um, and he might have said all sorts of horrible things back, but you know, you could stand up to these people and not have to change the entire Constitution. You could stand up to people and not have to get sued. You know, you could stand up to them. And people did back in the day when, you know, again, you know, I always tell the story how. The KKK came to a high school around here and people would show up and scream at him and it would be in the newspaper and then it would be over because nobody gived an S about the KKK here. They don't like them. <laughs> okay? They they had no they have no groundswell of support. None. Zero. So no one's afraid of them. They laugh at them. So you should laugh at this kid. Not change and not say, oh, the First Amendment's no excuse because that, I mean, how many examples do you need of the slippery slope? Because once you do that, and then, then the next thing is, well, you can't dead name people either. I mean, look at Twitter. It's a perfect example of the slippery slope. It started with, yeah, we're going to ban these guys who drop the N-word on the, on the site. And everybody's like, yay. Then we're going to ban uh, other racist things. Yay. Oh, now we're going to ban people who... You know, talk about trans people in a negative way. Yay! And now we're going to ban dead naming. Like, yay? Like, well, now we're going to ban, you know, now we're going to police your behavior off the platform, too. What? I mean, they just never stop. These authoritarians never stop. So, you know, talking about the First Amendment, like, it's an excuse. Like, it's a problem. It's like when you uh, watch a TV show, a cop show, and the, oh, you, you, you can't go, oh, I'd like to go in there and beat the confession out of that guy. Oh, but I can't because of the Constitution of the United States, the damn lawyers. That's, <laughs> you can't go beating suspects up. That's the whole reason we have the Constitution. That's what they did prior to the Constitution. You know, that's what they do in jolly old England. Uh, prior to rights, you know, they just take you in a room and beat the crap out of you until you confessed, and then they throw you in a jail cell for God knows how long. Uh, the 
was a mess, you're pooping on the floor, or they hang you, or whatever. Um, you know, people, they don't think that way. They think, oh, I'm being inconvenienced right now. Change the whole system. Idiots. Also from WND, Scotland passes bill to make feminine hygiene products free. Oh, and by the way, both these articles I've seen in other publications. So I'm not just relying on WND, by the way. Um, and this, yeah, this goes right. See, WND is more of an aggregate anyway. Scotland makes history by passing bill to make period and products for women free. It's dumb, and I'll tell you why. Again, they don't look down the road. First off, they're not free. <laughs> Scotland's going to have to use their tax money to do it, so everybody's going to be paying for it. And the problem is this. Um, hygiene products, it's the same problem they had here when they tried to make contraception free. Contraception in the United States, right? And I don't know the prices on um, uh, you know, feminine hygiene products, but I do know the prices of uh, condoms. So condoms in the United States, you can find condoms in a vending machine. They're like 50 cents or a dollar, right? I mean, they're very, very cheap very cheap to get condoms now you may not you may say well those aren't very good condoms they're they're perfectly serviceable you know most of them are trojans trojans the brand that's all over the united states so there's other brands too but there's very steep competition for condom use or condom makers in the united states so the price is very very affordable and even if you're going to go splurge and buy the top end condoms with like lubrication and special heating pad and a vibrating thing, uh, you know, they might cost you, I don't know, eight bucks for three of them or something. And that's still like a couple of bucks a condom. So condoms are cheap, but if you make them free, free, quote unquote, they're not really free, right? The first thing that happens is the government now, okay, we pay for them. Well, okay. So do you get reimbursed? I mean, I don't know what their system is here. But if, for instance, the government then picks a company, first off, you drive all the other companies out of business that make feminine hygiene products. Now, you might say, well, they're not going to do that. They'll buy them all. Okay. So you go into the dispensary or the store or wherever you get your feminine hygiene products for free, you have a choice. Do you buy the cheap stuff you used to buy? Do you buy the mid-range stuff that, you know, is pretty good. Sometimes you buy it, sometimes you didn't. Or do you buy the super high-end expensive stuff with all the bells and whistles? Well, when you had to choose with your money, you might buy the lower-end stuff. Because you're, maybe you're broke, maybe, you're, maybe you don't have any money that week, maybe you're just in a hurry, whatever. But you're never going to do that if it's free. You're always going to pick the high-end stuff. Because why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you pick the higher-end stuff? So it's the same thing with condoms, right? The condoms, you know, you get a, the dollar one out of the vending machine. You get the mid-range stuff that most people buy. Or you can get the super high-end stuff with lotions and vibrations and little bumps on the outside. You're going to buy the high-end stuff. Always. You're going to always pick that if it's free. Because it's free. And are you going to buy just what you need? Why should you do that? Why not get the big box? Why not have a supply in case you need them? Why not have a big box of sanitary napkins in case you need them? Well, I don't really have my period now, but I'm at the store and they're free. <laughs> so what ends up happening is you end up creating a shortage. <laughs> you end up putting out companies who... They make the cheaper brand. Now the incentive for the company has completely been perverse. Now they don't want to make the cheapest brand. Now they want to make the most expensive brand, right? So now, instead of charging the government, I don't know, $4 for the pad, box of pads, now they're going to come up with excuses to charge them $8 for a box of pads because their profit will go up, you see? You can't make a profit now off of people. They're not paying the money. The government is. The government's now the customer. 
So all you have to do is bamboozle them. Well, you know, we had to make some adjustments in the pads because, you know, uh, now that uh, everybody can get the pads for free, uh, we also had to accommodate um, trans women, you know, and others who maybe don't have, um, who have alternate genitalia, let's say, and we had to make it for them and they'll come up with any excuse. That, that will be their board meetings. It won't be about how do we make a product. It'll be like, how do we make the product better and cheaper? It'll be like, how do we make the product more expensive? Period. Pardon the pun. So Scotland, all Scotland has done is now made everything more expensive for anybody who's not qualified to get free sanitary napkins or whatever. So, you know, if you're going abroad... <laughs> <laughs> and you go to Scotland and you need some sanitary napkins, you're going to be like, $25 for a box of napkins? What the hell? Uh, or, you know, it would be the same thing with condoms. It wouldn't be, you wouldn't be able to buy a dollar condom in Scotland if they did the same thing for condoms. They would be like $15 boxes of condoms for the, like a norm, something that would cost like half the price in the United States. It would be through the roof in Scotland because they're going to keep pushing and pushing the price higher and higher and higher. And anybody outside the system won't be able to get it for free. They're going to have to pay the full freight. And that company doesn't want to lower the price for you because they got a good thing going with the government. And, uh, hey, if you need balloons for a birthday party and condoms are free, why would you buy balloons? Oh, we'll just buy a bunch of condoms and blow them up. Why not? They're free. Oh, you need... Uh, you need something for underneath your door. You got, say, a, a, a leaky uh, pipe in your bathroom and such. So on. Oh, no, don't use the paper towels. They're expensive. Use sanitary napkins. We got like five boxes of them. I'll go to the store tomorrow and get another five. Why wouldn't you? They're free. <laughs> Why not get all the boxes you can and build a fort out of them? Why not? Why not get the a bunch of boxes and then go to areas where immigrants live if they don't qualify for it or anywhere where they don't qualify and uh, sell them. Why not get the free boxes? Uh, I mean, this is in Scotland. Why not get the free boxes and then cross the border outside of Scotland into England and then sell them at a cut rate? Dollar a box for top end sanitary napkins. Why not? Do truckloads of them. And I'm sure they'll have something in place to keep keep that kind of limited. Oh, you can only get two boxes. Or, oh, you can only get one box. Or, oh, you got to sign up for a special government thing or whatever. So what? You can get people to sign up for that stuff under assumed names. And, you know, if it's worth it. If the, if the money makes sense. I mean, this is the way mob guys think, right? If the money makes sense, yeah, we'll do it. Or maybe you got a guy who works at uh, a pharmacy where they sell this stuff and they're always out of sanitary napkins. Why? Well, you cut a deal with this guy. He just gives you them all. And then he just lies. <laughs> he just lies and says, yeah, yeah, we got a bunch of people and they, they just took them all, you know. Uh, we'll have to order some more. They're free. The government's paying for them. They're not even, not even cutting into his profits. Yep, we sure get a lot of them. Sure get a lot of people coming in here taking those free sanitary napkins. Meanwhile, they're being moved down south and sold for like a couple bucks a box. They're, they're undercutting <laughs> that. They're just stealing money from the government, essentially. That's what's going to happen. Oh, but, you know, all the politicians in Scotland get to look so wonderful and woke. Who cares about that? Who cares? You know, meanwhile, the, people, the, the women who actually need these products... You know, if they go into a store, they live near a store like that. And it's not America. You know, in America, every friggin' corner has a Walgreens, a CVS, a Rite Aid, and 19 other places you can get whatever you need. Uh, in Scotland, you know, there's one place in a village. There's one or two places in a bigger town, let's say. It's not America. And they don't have that many product choices either. So... 
if you clean out a couple of stores in the region, I mean, there's just going to be a massive shortage of these products. Oh, but they're free. Oh, but you pay for them. Dumb. 